Now, friends, we are going to talk about communication technology. In the last section, section 5 of your chapter 1, we have discussed about mobile communication. Apart from this mobile communication, we have a lot of technological gadgets, tools, softwares, applications available with us. And with the help of such things, we are in a position to communicate very effectively. Let's understand few of them and repercussions, implications of such technology. So using technology in business communication. How this communication technology is being used? One, to getting tasks done and two, to communicate. This is the perspective with which we are going to use technology. Although this technology is not only being used for getting the tasks done or communicating. This technology has also created a lot of distractions for the human resource in the organization. This is also related to information overload, going to reduce the productivity of human resource. Why? Because you know a lot about the activity or your surroundings then you are concerned you are somehow uh, willing to talk about that willing to know about that although that may not be the first priority at that moment so it's going to create a lot of stress this is something known as information overload friends there's something known as information technology paradox what is this paradox a lot of information is available the challenge for us is to find the appropriate, usable, suitable information and use it. So the challenge is to filter this information, find out the real, meaningful, authentic information. So this is something known as information technology paradox. How can we handle this information technology paradox? One, maybe with the, with the help of policies. You may have certain policies that, yeah, what kind of reports will be treated as relevant for the company? What kind of reports will not be treated as relevant for the company? Or who may access what? Then guidelines that how far you are allowed to rely on a particular piece of information and take action on the basis of that. So certain guidelines are there. How are you going to use internal information, external information? How can you use them? And up to what extent you are required to share with others and up to what extent you are not required to share with others. And the people should be trained to do this. So uh, these are few productivity issues which can be handled and may help in the, uh, in the process of doing its job in the organization. We need to understand that this technology is also creating gap between individuals. You are constantly communicating, maybe over the phone or with the help of messages, WhatsApp messages, emails or maybe audio messages with the help of WhatsApp. But is it in a position? to fulfill the emotional needs of the people? Is it like real communication with the other person? No, not at all. So, there is a need to reconnect with the people. At times, the person may feel more satisfied in one-on-one -on -one conversation, face-to-face -face conversation. So, we have to understand that. One. Two. A lot of tough problems may not be solved with the help of technological communication or the communication based on, techno based on technology. Why? Because whenever you will say something, the other person will be having something to share with you. So how long you can keep on communicating with technology? One, two, you are also not in a position to understand body language. You are also not in a position to understand the feelings of the other person in that very sense. So, at times it's very difficult to solve tough problems with the help of technology. 
Okay, friends, let's see the kind of tools we have, technological tools we have to communicate effectively. So the first category is redefining the office. What is office? What was office? Office was a place where people used to uh, come, work together, handle organizational issues internally and externally and move out. This used to be office. But with the help of technology, what has happened that now this traditional office is not office anymore. This technology has redefined the office. The office is 24 by 7 office. You are in a position to communicate, connect, collaborate with the help of technology around the clock. So few tools are there like one shared online work spaces. Whatever you will do, you will upload. Whatever others will do, they will upload. And you will keep on sharing information, latest updates with the help of this shared online workspace. This is one part of it. Another thing is web-based meeting. Even WhatsApp is in a position to uh, allow or help you out in one-on-one -on -one meeting, video calling. So this is something like uh, using technology for meetings and similarly we have web based meeting Skype etc with the help of which you are in a position to communicate with other persons then the next one is video conferencing and tele presence so a person is not in a position to fly or come to a particular place what that person can do can address a group of persons with the help of video conferencing or telepresence and a group of people will be able to communicate with this uh, maybe officer or the leader or the senior person, technical person and know more about the project or the uh, situation. Then friends, we have voice technologies. Obviously this mobile technology is based on voice technology. We are communicating with the help of uh, sound only. So this voice technology is having two more aspects of it. One is a speech recognition. Now, you want to send a message to your mom, you can very easily ask your mobile to do it. The mobile will type the message, it will send it to your mom or friend. So this is a speech recognition. And then the second part of it is the speech synthesis. So some message is there. You are driving, you don't have enough time, you are eating, you are busy in some other activity. So your device will be able to read it out for you. So these are the two aspects of voice technologies. Similarly, friends, we have mobile business apps. These are the applications which are being, uh, say, run on mobile devices like your phone or tablet. And with the help of which you are in a position to accomplish a lot of regular tasks which you used to do with, it, with the help of computers. Then friends, we have a group of technologies known as collaborating and sharing information technologies. With such technologies, you are in a position to collaborate with others and share information with others. Like one is instant messaging. Your WhatsApp is also one of the beautiful examples of instant messaging. Whatever you are sending will be available to the other person or all the members of a particular group instantaneously. Similarly, we have wikis. You can create a page. Whatever you will upload will be visible to everybody. Then another part of it is related to crowdsourcing and collaboration platforms. What is this crowdsourcing? Like you have a problem, you have a challenge, you have a solution which you want to share with others. So you, up, you have uploaded that problem over the net and others will start responding to that. They will share their ideas, they will share their experiences and will add value to each one, those who are using this tool. So this is something known as crowdsourcing. And in this manner, we are also in a position to collaborate with each other at one-on-one -on -one level. We are also in a position to use 
technology for data visualization. Data visualization means what? That you are presenting data in a fashion which will be easily understood by the recipient. So, instead of putting the data in the form of a table, you have created beautiful graphs and those graphs are in a position to communicate effectively. Then we have Internet of Things. What is this Internet of Things? It is like embedded technology, your objects like maybe car, refrigerator, microwave, air conditioner are now uh, say embedded, having embedded technology fitted with a SIM. They are in a position to sense lot of things, upload that information over the net. From there, it may be transmitted to anyone, to your mobile device and so on. And similarly, you can also instruct, use, tra transfer information to such things with the help of your mobile device and internet. Another role of such kind of devices is to connect with the stakeholders easily. Although whatever we have shared related to various collaborating technologies is nothing but a tool to remain connected with other people. So your stakeholders may be internal or external can remain connected with the technology which is now easily available, freely available. Another part of this is friends, content curation. I have just shared with you that we are suffering from a challenge of information overload. I don't know what should I read, what should I not read, which, is, which piece of information is relevant for me and which piece of information is not relevant for me. So a lot of sites are there which are in a position to classify information meaning thereby that they'll curate the information and make that piece of information or that group of information available to you which you are really going to use for your uh, effective performance. So this is something known as content curation. To communicate we are also using blocks. Blocks are easy to create, maintain and quick information can be made available to the masses. It is free from lot of technological hassles. If you want to upload something on your website, then obviously you need technical people. It's, it's a technical uh, product or the technical tool. But in the case of blogs, any individual can handle and upload the information with the help of a uh, blog. Similarly, in the case of employment, or organizations are using application tracking systems. You have applied what has happened to your application. You are curious to know, but whom should you communicate with? It's a challenge. So the system is there. You go log in and see what has happened to your application. It's like application tracking system. Similarly, career advancement system or career planning systems are also available with the help of which a person may be in a position to understand where he or she stands and what he or she should do to get next promotion. Then friends, we have another part which is known as podcasting. Webcasting means you are creating a video or an audio with multimedia content for internet. Podcast means you are creating such kind of thing for mobile devices. What is the difference? For regular desktop devices, you may create heavy files, but for mobile devices, you are not in a position to use such kind of heavy files. So this is something known as podcasting. And then obviously YouTube, which all are familiar. So online video, even your mobile device is in a position to help you out to create a video about a product video may be created, about a challenge video may be created, about anything you can create a video and share that video with the help of YouTube. This technology is also going to help us in the process of building communities. Why do we need communities? Because now for socializing, people are not moving out of the four walls, but going to the net. So where should they go? We need communities for such people to go. 
how can you use uh, such technologies we are familiar with a lot of uh, such tools like facebook pinterest and so on and organizations or the companies are also creating groups for their consumers with the help of gaming technology the consumers will feel remain connected will enjoy and then will be in a position to appreciate the product or services of the uh, company we have another part of it which is known as user generated content site facebook facebook is one of them any user can keep on adding information quora quora is also one of the examples of user generated content micro blogging is a small messages on the blogs blogging we have understood micro blogging means now you are appearing with a small messages this is something known as micro blogging social networking we have already understood like facebook pinterest and so on similarly like i have just mentioned quora it's a community question and answer site you have a question you just upload that question there a lot of people will be happy to answer or you may find similar questions asked by a lot of people and answers to such all our questions available at one place so friends now a very significant aspect of business communication is going to be touched by this last section of chapter 1 this is all about ethics ethical communication let's understand what is this ethics what is this ethical communication and so on so this is committing to ethical and legal communication what is ethics ethics are accepted principles of conduct that govern behavior within a society you should behave in a particular fashion you should say this you shouldn't say this okay ethical communication includes all relevant information and that information should be true in every sense all relevant information is true in every sense two does not violate the rights of others and three is not deceptive in any ways so few parameters are there one relevant two it should be true three should not violate the right of others and four should not be deceptive if, if all the four parameters are there then yeah very easily you can say it's ethical communication so what is unethical unethical is plagiarism means you are claiming a content to be created by you which was not created by you but created by someone else this is something known as plagiarism this is unethical second part is omitting information deliberately intentionally or unintentionally if the relevant information you know you know relevance you should give the relevant information if relevant information is not being made available then this is omitting information this is something known as unethical communication thirdly selective misquoting you are not sharing the entire piece of information but quoting a part of it which is going to mislead the other person this is also unethical and fourth one is misrepresenting numbers numbers may help us in so many ways to decide a particular thing but if not quoted in perspective then they'll mislead us so if you are quoting certain numbers which are not uh, giving true picture then this is unethical the visuals are being distorted we have seen we have experienced this the faces are being uh, say changed of a photograph and so on so this is distorting visuals and this is also unethical and finally if something is going to violate privacy and security issues of the organization or individual then that that is also being treated as unethical what may be treated as 
ethical lapse and ethical dilemma. This is really very interesting to know. Whenever you are communicating with someone, you may be having multiple options. One option is seemingly perfect option at the moment. Another option may not be up to that much uh, appropriate, but is also appropriate. Tomorrow, the second alternative was not, which was not appropriate, will become appropriate. This we have all experienced and seen. So, it's a dilemma. How much should I share? What should I share? With whom? When? Etc. Etc. But lapse is folly on my part. part. I have not done something which I was required to do. So, let's understand more. What's ethical dilemma? Choosing from among conflicting alternatives. We have conflicting alternatives. This is something known as ethical dilemma. I have two or more alternatives. Now I am not in a position to understand which alternative should be selected by me. This is dilemma. And then what is left? Making a choice that is clearly unethical. Maybe intentionally or unintentionally. This is something known as ethical Elapse. Three elements are there to ensure ethical business communication. One is policies and structures of the organization. You must understand the structure and the policies of the organization and respond accordingly. What are you allowed to share? How much you are allowed to share? With whom you are allowed to share? At what point of time you are allowed to share? And so on and so forth. So, you will be having a lot of policies and structures to communicate or share the piece of information with others. One, fundamental, basic thing. Now, after understanding this part, you should also understand the company leadership. What they are expecting you to do. What should be done from the point of view of the leadership of the company? And the third is the individual employee. This I'll do, this I'll not do. So, three elements are there. If all the three elements are alert, aligned, designed, trained in a particular fashion, in an ethical manner, then Obviously, we will be in a position to save ourselves, organizations from unethical communication. Communication ethics. How to make good choices when your choices aren't clear. Every business communicator encounters situations that require ethical decision making. How can you be sure that you're making the right choice whenever you face one of these challenges? By following this four-step approach, you can be more confident that you're making the best possible choices, even in the most difficult circumstances. First, understand the kind of choice you're making. Not all ethical decisions are the same, as you'll see in a moment. Second, identify the information your audience needs. Third, Craft a message that conveys this information clearly and respectfully. Fourth, after you send the message, evaluate the outcome and respond as needed. Let's take a closer look at each step. The first step is to recognize whether you are facing an ethical dilemma or a potential ethical lapse. An ethical lapse occurs when you make communication choices that deprive audience members of the information they need in order to make an informed decision or take an informed stance on an issue. For example, if you lie on your resume or tell a customer you can finish a project by a particular date when you know you can't, you are committing an ethical lapse. Whenever you communicate in business, you ask audiences to trust that you will provide information that is complete, true, and not deceptive in any way. If you intentionally violate that trust, you have committed an ethical lapse. 
The choice regarding ethical lapses is simple. Don't do it. Unlike ethical lapses, ethical dilemmas are usually much more difficult to navigate because your choices are not so clear-cut. With an ethical dilemma, you might have two or more options that are ethically valid or equally unpleasant, or that pit the interests of one party against the interests of another. Let's say you're the CEO of a company that is in financial trouble. You are in secret merger talks with another company. If the merger is completed, it will save your employees' jobs. If it doesn't, you're almost certain your company will go under and everyone will lose their jobs. The talks will last another two months, and right now, there's no way to know if they will succeed. Should you explain the situation to your employees so they can start looking for other jobs during the talks, just in case? However, if too many employees leave within the two-month period, the other company will pull out of the deal and everyone who is still with your company will lose their jobs. You clearly have a dilemma. Should you explain the situation to your employees so they can start looking for other jobs during the talks just in case? However, if too many employees leave, the other company will pull out of the deal and everyone who is still with your company will lose their jobs. Dilemmas like this are among the toughest decisions that business people ever have to make because there is no easy answer and every option has a downside. To resolve dilemmas like these, go back to the definition of ethical communication, which is giving people the information they need to make an informed choice or develop an informed stance on an issue. In the case of the employees whose jobs are at risk, many are undoubtedly going about with their lives on the assumption that their jobs are secure and they don't need to be looking for alternatives or preparing for change. However, their jobs are not secure and they don't have the information they need to develop an informed stance on the matter. One possible solution to this dilemma is to share the information you have with your employees. Let them know that the company is in trouble and you're doing everything you can to save their jobs. But ask employees to help in this effort by staying with the company until the merger talks are concluded. They can prepare to leave by exploring job opportunities, updating their resumes, adjusting their finances, and so on. But ask them to consider staying for the good of the company and their colleagues. This way, if the merger talks fail and the company goes under, employees are ready to move and won't be blindsided by the company's collapse. Again, there are no easy ways out of dilemmas like this one. But if you have given people the information they need, you have made the most ethical choice possible. Once you have decided what to tell your audience, the next step is to decide how to express it. Recognize that your ethical work is not done yet. When you have bad news to share, it can be tempting to downplay it in order to minimize the emotional trauma for you and your audience. In the case of the company whose jobs are at risk, you might be tempted to soften the blow by avoiding difficult truths or by putting a false positive spin on negative news. Being sensitive to your audience's emotions is important, but don't go so far that you avoid telling the truth. And with persuasive messages, there is a risk of overselling your message and slipping into hype or puffery. If you're pitching your new invention to investors with the claim that it will change the world, chances are you're overselling it. Be sure you can support every claim you make. With all types of messages, don't resort to emotional manipulation. If you create advertising for children's products that suggests parents would be uncaring or irresponsible not to buy them, you may have slipped over the line into manipulation. The final step in this process is to evaluate the outcome of your messages and respond as needed. This won't be necessary or even possible in every situation, but for high-impact messages that affect people's lives, try to verify that your message got through. For example, if you sell a potentially dangerous product that must be used in a specific way in order to be safe, you can survey your customers to make sure they understand the directions you provided. You can also monitor social media and customer support exchanges if the communication is external, or check in with employees if the communication is internal to see if your audiences could benefit from reminders or clarifications. By taking these four steps, 
Whenever you're faced with a communication dilemma, you can be more confident that you have taken all facets of the situation into consideration and that you are communicating in a way that fulfills your ethical responsibilities as a communicator. Friends, it's obvious with the help of this uh, movie that in any situation, what should we do? One, define the situation. Have you defined the situation? Well, are you in a position to understand the nuances of the situation? Alternatives you have within the environment. One. Two. Why are you communicating? Do you have any need to communicate? Can you avoid this communication? If you can't avoid, then why are you communicating? You are communicating to pacify, to solicit, to advise, to recommend, etc., etc. Understand this and then communicate. Third, what will be the impact of your message? What impact will your message have? So you need to understand that if you will say something, then uh, what other party will do on the basis of this piece of information shared by you? What good or harm will be achieved? Now, if it's going to be, uh, say, really beneficial, maybe go ahead. If it's not going to be beneficial for both the, both, the, both the parties, then there is a caution. See, what should you do? Will your assumptions change? Today you are thinking that this is right. Tomorrow, if you are getting another piece of information or you are being educated with something else, then the, whole, the entire premise will change. Then obviously, you have to understand this part of the situation also. And finally, are you comfortable with the decision? If you are comfortable, fine. If, it's not, if you are not comfortable, then check. So friends, this was all about the making ethical choices. Now, whenever you are communicating with someone, individual or organization, then you have to ensure legality of the communication. So the last part of this section 7 is trying to highlight legal part of this uh, communication, legality of the communication. What kind of legality may be involved? One, in the case of promotions. Promotions is not about the promotion of an, of an individual from one position to another position. This promotion is advertisement. If you are advertising something, if you are claiming something about your product or service, then how much you can claim, how much should be, say, incorporated in any advertisement, you must know the law related to that. Second, if you are entering into contract with someone, then please read law of the land and then enter into the contract. If you are sending employment message, job profile, offer letter, recommendation letter or whatever, please be very careful and understand the legal implications of this communication. We have already talked about plagiarism. So this intellectual property is part of that. Whenever you are doing something, make sure that you are not going to infringe the rights of others, IPR, intellectual property rights of others. Similarly, friends, in the case of financial reporting, in every country and maybe in every state of that country, you will find different law related to financial reporting. What kind of balance sheet should you show? What kind of statements you have to prepare? And uh, what are the essential legal disclosure requirements? So this all has to be considered. You have to be very cautious about the law related to defamation. You will be saying something about someone, organization or individual and then the person or the organization may feel offended, may go to the court against you. This is law related to defamation. And finally, 
what kind of transparency you have to maintain while communicating with others as far as the law is concerned is really important for each one of us. Thank you very much. With the help of this, we have completed chapter number one.